Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And I'm Patrick from Tested and TechThing.com. Awesome, welcome Patrick. Today we're gonna to talk about tiny computers. Tiny computers. Specifically mm -hmm. the Raspberry Pi series. The Raspberry Pi Zero. So earlier this year I ordered uh, the chip $9 PC mm -hmm. and Right about when the, the Next Thing Co. crew is about to start shipping those, the Raspberry Pi Zero shows up, which is this tiny little person, dude, wow. creature. Now, Raspberry Pi made a name for itself uh, developing really low-cost PCs for developing countries, mm -hmm. education specifically, but it's kind of been taken up by the maker community yes. for projects. Well, it, it's amazing what you can do. So this is a standard uh, Raspberry Pi, sort of the Model 2 version of it, and this will give you an idea of how small the Pi Zero is. Now, I'm, I, I have this in a very nice C4 Labs enclosure, but if you look at the, the kind of screw heads here, that's pretty much the size of a Raspberry Pi, a standard size Raspberry Pi. So yeah, it came out of sort of you know the UK, they're gonna do the, the Sinclair for this generation, mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna learn how to program at home, and I, people, I've seen people using these for, uh, you know, running Kodi or Plex for home theater PCs. Um, you know, uh, it's a, a computer that you can essentially put in an Altoids ten. Yeah, BitTorrent sync, mobile right. devices, uh, main boxes. You know, I built the 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 Volumio mm -hmm. audio player. Um, Single use things that you could you take advantage of a little bit of processing power. Yes, They've gotten better over the years. Yes, uh, also some I/O. Yes, well, it's funny. So this. They've all been single core ARM processors up until the, the last version mm -hmm. of the Raspberry Pi, which was a quad core processor. Mm -hmm. Only running at 900 megahertz, but four cores, which is a huge difference. Um, Raspberry Pi Zero really goes in the opposite direction because they have stripped this down to make it $5. Like, uh, I want to say uh, Magpie magazine shipped out an entire issue with these on the cover. That's how inexpensive these are. But they get rid of a lot of things. You'll notice, like, if you want to use the GPIO pins, you're going to be doing some soldering. Sorry. There is no Ethernet jack. Um, there is micro USB per power. There is micro USB for all of the rest of your connectivity, which, by the way, is going to require uh, an OTG cable if you want to connect anything to it, like a hub. Um, and by the way, there's a micro HDMI on that. So unless you happen to have a micro HDMI, my cable at home, you're probably going to spend more than the Raspberry <laughs> Pi Zero cost to buy uh, your micro HDMI cable. And you know, we did one of these on Tech Thing. By the time we had like, you know, the power, the power connected to it and the OTG cable and a mouse and a keyboard, it was literally like twice the size of the, yeah. <laughs> yeah. At this point, it's no longer no. something that fits in a pack of gum. No. And admittedly, like, okay, so this is probably more, you know, I, I have ridiculous Wi-Fi issues, so I have ridiculous Wi-Fi devices. Case. But even if you do one of the little tiny Wi-Fi adapters, you know, you still need something to connect it to the Raspberry Pi Zero because the Raspberry Pi Zero has no uh, Ethernet or Wi-Fi connectivity on board. So th that means to me this is primarily an embedded computer. Um, you know, like the Pi A Plus and the Pi B, it's a single core processor. It's running at 1,000 megahertz, mm -hmm. uh, and it has 512 megabytes of RAM. So it has fairly, should be faster actually than most of the, the other single core Raspberry Pi processors. Um, there's what no, type of operating system are you putting in that? Raspbian. I okay. mean, yeah. you can pretty much anything that'll run in any of the other Raspberry Pis should run on this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but you have to get it on there, which means you're going to have to, you know, <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to. It's funny, we ended up with a giant pile of cables. There's no audio out other than HDMI on board this. Um, but the trade off is also that it's, it's incredibly low power. You guys, I'm going to crib here from the sheet because yeah. you found an article in December. Um, where did it go? Oh, uh, um, yeah, it's, it, I'll put the link below, but basically, people have been doing power tests because it's yeah. one of those things when you build uh, one of these, you know, better computers mm -hmm. or low power computers, every Every little bit of power well, counts. So turn HDMI off, mm -hmm. turn the LED off, um, you know, and you're looking at, and, and have nothing in the USB port, and you're looking at 30 milliamps at idle. Wow. You know, if you're running uh, USB Wi-Fi, you're probably looking at 120 milliamps, which is 0.7 watts. You could crank that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you could probably use one of those horrible flashlights that you shape yes. like this um, to do that. Um, but you know, again, it's a $5 PC, but much like the $25 or $35 Raspberry Pis, you know, to get it running, you need a micro SD card, you need USB power, you need, you know, a monitor to connect it to and an HDMI cable. Now the micro SD card you put in there also matters. Yes. And you want the faster ones actually help with performance or 
significantly. Yeah, I mean, it was interesting. A few years ago, they were like, oh, we're having issues writing to the faster cards. And with the latest generations, that seems to no longer be an issue. Like mm -hmm. you could put a faster mm -hmm. card in and in theory back in the day that would reduce performance. Yeah, now it's like get a class 10 card or faster. Right. Um, which at this point, if you're shopping off Amazon, you have 64 gigabyte micro SD card, which is eight times what you need to stash the operating system on, is probably 20 or 25 bucks. So getting a decent speed card shouldn't be an issue. Um, so if you didn't get this, you know, bundled with on the cover of a magazine, and you want to, you know, buy a Raspberry Pi to do a project, why would you want something this small if you have to have all the accessories plugged in? Well, what can you do with it? Okay, so if you are doing uh, in a, an autonomous device like a robot, mm -hmm. or you're doing some sort of, you have a couple sensors plugged into this that you're using to do, uh, you know, observations. Whether you know, it's it, you know, for f anywhere between, depending on how many you're buying, anywhere between thirty and hundred bucks, you can buy, a, you know, literally like ridiculous sensors um, from you know, barometric pressure, you know, grab, there, there are just ridiculous amounts of ways you can uh, basically, you can either sense what's going on around the Raspberry Pi, you know, LP gas sniffers, CO2 sniffers, um, barometers. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, yeah. you start going through the list and there's all sorts of ideas where, you know, I don't need, if I'm not plugging it into a computer, if I don't need to use a giant, you know, Pi hat or, or set of GPIO outputs on this, if I'm doing something where, I just need a little tiny computer, a little tiny space. The classic example that I think if you've searched for Pi Zero, you've probably seen like the Pi Zero embedded in an Xbox controller. Um, that's a really interesting usage case. But I think for most people, if you're not building some sort of embedded device, whether it's a robot or something that's you know doing observations or something that's autonomous, um, you're probably better off just yeah. getting the full-size Raspberry Pi. The hassle that you would avoid, just having built-in Ethernet, yeah. if you're doing any type of connecting to a server or using yeah. this to process video, that's, it's worth it, spending 25 bucks. Yeah, I mean, like Adafruit's got a pretty cool, they have a USB console or TTL cable that allows you to do a serial connection. So if you if you want to run this without an HDMI monitor, mm -hmm. you know, you can buy the cable that allow you to connect over the USB port and treat it like a serial port because 1992 will never die. Um, <laughs> you know, and it's pretty fast, you know, it's a one gigahertz, 512 megabytes. So for being a very tiny embedded computer, it's a, a fairly powerful, tiny embedded computer. Awesome. Well, I'm sure a bunch of you out there either have Raspberry Pis or maybe have the Raspberry Pi Zero. We'd love to hear from you what you've been doing with it. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Uh, what are you gonna be doing with this? You think you're gonna do any projects, Patrick? Uh, I've been playing around with a couple ideas. I, they're, they're especially compelling for robots and stuff, but yeah. I am not a good enough programmer for that. So, you know, one of our Tech Thing viewers was kind enough to send this in for us to check out, and I'm probably gonna play with it a little more and then send it back before I break it or, or get tempted to start. You and know, you also, like you mentioned, C4 Labs makes this beautiful case yes. for the Raspberry Pi C4labs.net. Uh, they also make one for the Zero. By the way, you know, don't put anything. This isn't as bad as the Raspberry Pi, but these surface-mounted components are shockingly easy to knock off if this is rattling around in your backpack or toolbox. So get a case for it. Don't take it. <laughs> make it look pretty. Tiny computer. Thank you, Patrick, for coming in this week to my talk pleasure. tech with us. Where can people find your other shows and other podcasts? Oh, my goodness. Uh, please come check out techthing.com, T-E-K-T-H-I-N-G.com, or youtube.com slash techthing, or uh, a new home theater one I just started with Robert Heron called AV Excel, and that's avxl.com. And we'll have more stuff on tested.com. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. Like this video, and we'll be back next week with another tech review on Tested. Until then, I'm Norm. I'm Patrick. See you next time.